from the first media timeout of the ball game, eight to seven, Westmont College out in front. Well, the main story as of late within the NAIA has been upset city in men's basketball. The trend continued on Thursday night, at least within the Golden State Athletic Conference, as three ranked teams fell to teams lower than them in the standings and or the rankings. As Leo Pepe was stripped of the ball as he was going for a layup right through the middle of the paint. And Jordan Spascheck is the one who picks up the foul. The top three teams in the GSAC standings all lost. And they lost to the fifth seeded, sixth seeded, and seventh seeded teams in the conference. As Leo Pepe, the lefty, can't get the bounce on the first free throw. And we stay 8-7. Fourth ranked Vanguard, seventh ranked the Masters, and 18th ranked William Jessup all falling on Thursday night. And for Corey Pepe, hits the second free throw, ties us up at eight. Arizona Christian ranked team, number 24 in the country, they took down Vanguard in a pretty emotional game for the Firestorm. As Nawache throws one up and he misses, and now a foul on the second chance right through traffic. It was rough for the firestorm because well, they had just found out one day before they learned of the passing of one of their assistant basketball coaches, Talib Ukda. And unfortunately for the firestorm community, they were dealt with that blow right before a big game against Vanguard. And of course, our thoughts and our prayers are with the Ukda family and the Arizona Christian family as Nawache hits the first free throw and it's nine to eight. He was a member of the 2012, 13 and 14 squad at ACU and he was an All-American, led him to consecutive national championships and was on the staff this season in year number one as the ball is deflected out of bounds by Maxwell Hudgens and now Ross Williams will check in for the Oaks wearing number three and he comes on for Najai LeBlanc. It's 10 to eight, Westmont after Nwache hit both free throws. And somehow one day later after his passing, they pick up a win, helps keep them above Menlo College in the GSAC standings. Ross Williams, right wing three, wide left. John Payne, offensive rebound, fakes once and gets the second chance bucket to tie us up at 10 here with 14.08 to go in the first half. Kyle Scalmanini, nifty moves, but he's trapped by three. Gets out of there and underhands one. Now heaving a three is Hudgens, and he drains it. Long range from outside the right wing. And it's 13 to 10, Westmont College. First three-pointer made by the Warriors tonight on three tries. Wall to Charles Neal wearing number 25 as opposed to his usual number four the reigning Golden State Athletic Conference Player of the Week. Ross Williams bounced down low for John Payne. Shot clock to eight. He's in the corner by the bleachers. Now on the baseline, back turn. Down to five seconds. Outside, Jared Wall for three. Just takes a bounce left, but Corey Leal Pepe scampers over and gets the rebound by the Westmont bench. Charles Neal across the floor. John Payne catch and shoot a corner three. He drains it. Ties us up at 13 with 13-13 left to go. Big second chance opportunity set up by the heads up play from Leo Pepe. Nawache lost it off his hip. Here comes Jared Wall, two on two. Tries to get around Nawache. A blocking foul is called as he missed the layup and then hit the hardwood violently. They call the blocking foul on Kyle Scalmanini. And that's his first foul. Evens us up at four apiece on the board. And Jared Wall now will go to the free throw line. A Folsom, California native, a 6'1 junior. A graduate of Folsom High. First two years of his Menlo College career, electrifying as that free throw goes in. And now we see subs come in for the Warriors. Cade Roth and Geis Holsebosch check on. Cade Roth wearing 15, Holsebosch wearing 30. And for the Oaks, Leo Pepe comes out. And Petra Ropek checks on for the first time. Jared Wall, 
told me that he'll be rooting for whoever wins the Super Bowl. As he hits that free throw, hits them both, and makes it 15-3. He is your stereotypical bandwagon fan. Doesn't care who wins as long as somebody wins, and then he'll root for that team until they lose. Cade Roth, top of the arc. To the right side for Deshaun Scott, who also checked in wearing number 11. Scott through traffic, towered over by Ropek. He's in trouble, turns around, finds Holsabosch. Holsabosch maneuvers his way through traffic, whistles fly, and Kaniella Iona was standing in my way of the call. They got an offensive foul on Holsabosch. So the fifth Warriors foul, and it gives Menlo College the ball back up by two. And Charles Neal will walk it across the timeline to Ross Williams, the Detroit, Michigan native. For Jared Wall at the top of the arc, now back to Williams. John Payne, corner three, and he's money again. John Payne has hit a couple of threes here as the ball's poked out of bounds by Ross Williams. And as it was on Thursday night, Haynes Prim is rocking early. Matthew Ramon checks on for Olisa Nawache. John Payne this season from three-point range. Pretty good numbers, actually, when you look at it. 45% entering tonight, and not a, not a small sample size. He was 18 for 40. That's exactly two three-pointers per game. Now he's up to about 50% as that jump shot from the mid-range is short by Ramon. Offensive rebound. Hudgens can't put it back, but then gets another offensive rebound. Scott fakes a three, steps left. He tries, and he misses the three. Rebound. Hudgens tosses it in for Holsebosch. Third offensive board on the possession, and then Scott lost a handle on it, went out of bounds on the baseline, and somehow the Oaks survived the possession and come out of it unscathed. Jared Wall checks off for Najai LeBlanc. I have no idea how Westmont was unable to score on that possession. You give up so many offensive rebounds and so many shots in close proximity. That's got to happen. John Payne in the corner. He's trying to drive. Slings one for Ross Williams. He's open for three, but he misses left. And now Petra Ropek fouls Matthew Ramon over the shoulder when they were contesting for the rebound. 11 minutes, 25 seconds left to go in the opening half of play. 18 to 13, Menlo College is out in front. It's Cade Roth, the freshman out of Silverton, Oregon. Now Hudgens out to the corner for the aforementioned Roth. And a whistle blows and a foul on the shot. They call Najai LeBlanc for his second foul of the game. And that will give Roth three opportunities from the free throw line. Roth has only been there 14 times this year, 9 of 14. For you math majors, 64.3%. First one off a couple of bounces, finds a home. 18 to 14. And Low College will... Host William Jessup next Saturday. And as the second free throw is good now, a couple of subs, Nemo and Testa come on for the Oaks. And it looks like Scalmanini is on for Westmont. Third game of a three-game homestand for Menlo College. Just one game next week against the 18th-ranked Warriors. 7.30 tip-off right here on the Menlo College Sports Network. Ryan Barnett will have the play-by-play -play as the next shot misses. So two of three for Cade Roth. Charles Neal grabbed the rebound. Testa to the corner. Williams, ball movement to Payne. Back down low for Testa. Bounce to the corner. Anders Nemo. Thought about a quick pass, but now holds on to it. Nemo for John Payne. Right wing three. He's just short. And Testa comes in and grabs the offensive rebound. And now the Oaks will slow it down again for John Payne. He's rocking the headband tonight. The white headband along with Anders Nemo. Baseline, Testa all the way across. John Payne tries the left wing. It goes in and out, and a whistle flies. So too does Jeremiah Testa as he went over the backside, I believe, of Geis Holsebosch. So a foul, and now a one and one on the way for Westmont College as that is the seventh Oaks foul with 10.34 to go. 
So in the bonus now, Westmont College and Holsebosch will shoot free throws. A Manteca, California native. East Union High School. He stands at just 5'11". The second shortest warrior. The first of the one and one is good. Josiah Esselstrom is the shortest at 5'10". He's a redshirt freshman out of San Diego. He has played in nine games this season. Whereas Holsebosch, we saw him last year. He's played now in every game. Second one misses, and Charles Neal is right there for the rebound. Jeremiah Testa trying to go to the rim. He's fouled as he missed the layup from the right side and sprawled out on the floor is Holsebosch. He's the one called for the blocking foul. His second foul, and now Jeremiah Testa goes to the free throw line. Jeremiah Testa already with five early points in the game. He has 42 multi-point games in his Menlo College career. And he is a 72% free throw shooter this season. First one bounces out. Now Colton Worth checks on for the Oaks to replace Ross Williams. Kolsabash is off, and Jordan Spaschek comes on for Westmont. Colton Worth in for the 15th time this season. The senior out of Novato, California. And a transfer from the University of Laverne up in Washington. Second free throw hits, and it's 19 to 16. The Oaks up by three as we approach the midway point of the first half. Turning. Scott sinks the turnaround mid-range jump shot and then has a few words for the baseball team over there in the corner. They've been the rowdiest of the bunch so far. They led the charge Thursday night. They also tried to do the wave as that ball is deflected out of bounds. Menlo will keep possession with 9.58 to go in the first, up by one. Of course, the baseball team not in action today. They were slated to play what you could call a game and a half at Cartan Field. It didn't really rain at all today. It rained overnight, but the field in unplayable conditions. The tarp was on, but the outfield just an absolute lake. Neal hurls one to Payne. That's intercepted by Cade Roth, and he wins the race to the rim with a finger roll. And the Warriors are now in front. They lead 20 to 19. Anders Nemo to try and get things back in the right direction for the Oaks. John Payne off the bounce pass down low. Turns around through the legs dribble. Weaves between two. Finds Nemo. Fakes one pass. Draws traffic to his left so he plays it weak side to Charles Neal. Charles Neal had a screen set by John Payne. Shot clock to seven. Drives the baseline. Fades away jumper. Misses strong and a rebound by Cade Roth. Kyle Scalmanini now across the stripe for Westmont College and directing traffic he is the junior guard, Jordan Spaschek, has Anders Nemo in front. No one moving on the floor. Everyone to a standstill. Deshaun Scott with it. Scott to Ramon. Ramon cuts right, drives left. He's knocked loose of the ball, and Colton Worth was right there to get the leftovers. From Neal to Testa on the layup. Menlo back in front by one, 21 to 20. So again, walking it across is Spaschek. It seems like the Warriors are playing a lot slower than we expected. Not a whole lot of ball movement early in the shot clock. They're waiting till late before they move it. High jump shot by Scott, and the lead goes right back to Westmont as he took that one from the top of the key, and it's 22 to 21. Westmont in front over Menlo College. Testa tries to drive. He stumbles and gets it out to John Payne by the Warriors bench. Anders Nemo. Takes a screen to his left, pick and roll to John Payne. Now John Payne, 360s, right hand hook shot. It goes in and out, and Matthew Ramon jumps in to get the rebound. Now the Warriors sprinting is Scalmanini. He throws up a shot. It somehow bounces in, and there's a foul. Anders Nemo picks up the foul. For Anders, that's his second, and that sends us to our second media timeout. Warriors have the lead 24-21 as we step aside for a commercial break. You're watching the Menlo College Sports Network. <laughs> 